In the 2040s, a base called Tantalus is built on Mars. Eight astronauts have been on a six-month mission to gather samples, and today is their last day. In 19 hours, the spacecraft Aurora will arrive from Earth to pick them up. In the Martian desert, Vincent and Rebecca are driving a rover to an excavation site, but they see a sandstorm coming. When they arrive, Vincent radios Kim, telling her it's time to head back to the base and get ready to leave. Kim, however, is too focused on digging for good samples and ignores him. As they wait, Vincent complains to Rebecca about Kim's stubbornness and says he's not looking forward to the six-month trip back to Earth, even though he's excited to go home. When Kim finally gets in the rover, she grumbles that they're leaving with nothing to show for their six months of work. On their way back, Captain Charles calls them, urging them to hurry because they need help fixing the communication link to the Aurora. At the base, Richard manages to restore the signal, but still needs to fix the power, which is struggling because of the storm. Meanwhile, Marco asks Captain Charles for one last trip to the excavation site, saying he needs to fix a broken gamma sensor. Charles is hesitant, but eventually agrees, telling him to take Richard and be back before dark. When the trio arrives and sees Marco and Richard leaving, Kim complains it's unfair she was forced to come back while the guys get to leave again. Back at the base, Vincent is fixing the cooling system while chatting with the psychologist, Robert. Vincent mentions that the Aurora's approach trajectory looks like drunk driving. Meanwhile, Kim checks Marco's workstation and finds out his real intentions. She discovers an image of cavities on a rock. Rebecca points out that the cavities look like microbial borings. When they examine the sample under the microscope, they find signs of bacterial cell division. This means Marco lied because he wants all the credit for himself. Angry, Charles calls Richard and Marco to say the excavation site is now off limits. But Marco tells Richard to pretend he didn't hear Charles because of the bad signal. Marco then takes a soil sample from the dig site. As he takes a closer look, the ground starts shaking and suddenly collapses, trapping Marco underground. Richard rushes out of the rover to help, but he can't see well because of the steam. Moments after Richard calls for backup, Charles and Lauren arrive to rescue Marco. Richard thinks Marco is already dead, but Lauren disagrees and tries to go down the pit. Charles immediately stops her saying the pit is too dangerous right now. They decide Lauren will stay behind to keep watch while Charles and Richard return to the base to get proper rescue gear. Back at the base, Kim tells Charles she wants to announce their discovery. Richard points out that Marco died, but Kim says it's Marco's fault for not following protocol, which makes Richard mad. The group contacts Mission Control, who has seen the report and gives them permission to retrieve Marco despite the risk. Before leaving, Robert wants Charles to scold Kim for her behavior because Marco's death isn't his fault. But Charles says that every crew mistake is his responsibility. While Charles takes Rebecca, Robert, and Vincent back to the site, Lauren waits in the rover. Suddenly, she hears someone trying to get inside the vehicle and tries to inform Charles over the radio, but he can't hear her because of the storm interference. When the team finally arrives at the excavation site, Lauren has disappeared. They assume she fell into the pit so Vincent straps his suit to a rope and goes down. As he's about to reach the bottom, he notices a microbial organism growing on the rock formation. The further he goes down, the worse Vincent feels, and he starts hyperventilating, having flashbacks of being trapped in the Aurora. Noticing this, the others immediately pull the rope to bring him back up. Vincent takes a moment to calm down and tells them he didn't see anyone down there. Then Robert looks around the area and is surprised to find two sets of footprints leading back to the base. This doesn't make sense, because they could have just taken the rover. The team calls Kim to tell her to get ready for possible casualties. Kim points out that if Marco's suit is damaged, he could be suffering from brain damage due to oxygen deprivation. At that moment, Richard checks the tracking system and sees two figures 50 meters away from the base. As Kim tries to contact them on the radio, Richard goes to the airlock to let them in. At the same time, Kim sees a strange figure slowly making its way to the base. Richard opens the airlock, and Marco falls to the ground, revealing a hole in his helmet. Richard helps him take it off, but steps back in shock when he sees Marco now looks like a zombie. Suddenly, Marco stands up and grabs an electric drill to attack Richard, stabbing him in the gut. Richard falls, but manages to move enough to trigger the alarm. Kim rushes to the airlock, but when she sees Marco, she runs away to hide in another room. Soon Lauren reaches the airlock too, showing she's also infected. 
Richard, struggling with pain, manages to run into another room and lock the door behind him. Lauren goes after Kim, who fights the best she can, despite not being a soldier. Soon, Marco joins in, and Kim uses everything in the room to defend herself. One of the creatures gets distracted by drinking some liquid on the floor, so Kim knocks the other down and runs, locking the door behind her. Before passing out, Richard manages to say, Mayday, on the radio. When the others come back, Charles tells them to wait outside while he investigates. Inside, he finds a complete mess and sees Kim as Marco starts breaking down the glass door. Charles orders her to get in a suit while he tries to hold off the creatures. Soon, Marco gets out, and Charles tries to reason with him, but the infected brain doesn't understand words. Once she's suited up, Kim leaves the base, and Charles runs to the airlock. On his way out, the infected astronauts catch up to him and stab him in the shoulder. After some struggle, Charles escapes and reunites with the others. They disable the door to trap their sick friends. Vincent complains, but Kim shows him the creatures' faces, pointing out they aren't humans anymore. The group runs to hide in the greenhouse dome, and Rebecca tries her best to treat Charles's wound even though she isn't a doctor. Charles realizes that he's dying and gets sad because he can't remember what his family looks like, so he asks the crew to tell his family that they were in his thoughts. Suddenly, Charles grabs Robert by the neck, so the others have to pull him back and try to calm him down. A desperate Vincent holds him down until Charles has trouble breathing. Then Charles tells the crew they'll never see home and passes out. Vincent thinks he's dead, but Kim immediately ties Charles to the table in case his body reanimates like Marco and Lauren. Upset by the sight, Vincent covers the body with a blanket. While discussing what to do, Vincent looks under the blanket and sees the infection spreading. Moments later, they hear an explosion outside. So they look at the monitor to discover that the infected astronauts have escaped by using an explosive on the airlock. Soon, they make it to the dome and start pounding on the door at the same time Charles's body shakes for a few seconds. The crew wants to contact the space station, but the comms are down, so Vincent volunteers to go through the oxygen pipe to get back to the base and fix the system. After Vincent leaves, Rebecca takes a sample of Charles's blood and notices that he's infected too. Minutes later, Vincent stops crawling because he is having a panic attack as he's haunted by the memories of his accident at the space station. On the radio, Rebecca helps him calm down by saying everyone in the team is as scared as he is. When he finally reaches the base, he finds blood all over the place but still gets down to work. Back to Rebecca, she wonders if antibiotics could neutralize the bacteria and injects Charles with a solution. Charles's body immediately starts shaking and contorting, so Rebecca thinks he may be fighting the infection. However, Kim points out that the movement is just the body's reflexes having a natural reaction. Once the body stops moving, Rebecca takes another blood sample and discovers that the bacteria is no longer multiplying, meaning the solution doesn't cure the bacteria, but does slow it down. Kim pours the solution into a decontamination spray so they can vaporize it and use it against the creatures. Meanwhile, Vincent manages to contact Aurora, but before he can tell them about the situation, the power shuts down. Robert checks the monitor and notices their sick friends are going back to the base because they can't break the dome doors. The team agrees to unlock the door to lure the creatures to the airlock and spray them with antibiotics. As soon as one of the infected astronauts comes in, the decontamination spray activates and the creature falls to the floor squirming. Unfortunately, Rebecca then discovers that the effect is only temporary because the bacteria is starting to develop resistance to the medicine. Vincent is making his way to fix the power only to come across an infected Richard, but he doesn't hesitate to repeatedly bash Richard's head with his flashlight. No matter how hard he hits, the creature won't go down, so Vincent runs to the oxygen pipe and crawls back. He asks Rebecca to open the panel while warning her he didn't seal the other end of the pipe. The others put on their helmets before pulling Vincent out, then Kim grabs two bottles of antibiotics and throws them at Richard, who isn't held back. Vincent and Rebecca run to open the airlock, hoping to escape. At that moment, Robert notices that Charles's body is starting to reanimate, so he runs too and locks the door behind him, leaving Kim to die under the creature's attack. When he joins Vincent and Rebecca, he just tells them Kim didn't make it. In the airlock, the creature they sprayed before is starting to wake up, so Robert kicks it a few times in fury. Then the trio finally opens the airlock and runs away, but on their way out, 
their infected friend stabs Rebecca in the leg with scissors. Fortunately, the crew is fast enough to reach the rover, and Vincent injects Rebecca with an antibiotic, hoping it'll help her body fight the bacteria. But after a few moments, they realize they don't have enough power to reach the landing site. They'll have to walk there, which Rebecca can't do because of her wound. Vincent thinks they should take Rebecca to the base to treat her injury, but Robert thinks they should leave her behind because she's infected. Rebecca points out Robert may be infected too because Charles grabbed his neck, but Robert changes the subject. He remembers there's another rover at the excavation site, so they head there instead. Once they reach the right spot, Robert makes his way to the other rover on foot and then contacts Vincent on the radio, telling him to leave Rebecca. Vincent refuses, so Robert gets away alone. Vincent comes out to stop him, but it's too late. To make matters worse, he sees that the infected ones have been following them and are getting closer. So Vincent and Rebecca drive the rover through the sandstorm in hopes of losing them. Vincent thinks they'll have enough power to get to the landing site in the morning once the sun charges the rover's batteries. Meanwhile, the Aurora departs from the space station and heads to Mars. In the morning, Vincent wakes up and finds a message from the space station, informing them a rescue team is on its way. Vincent tries to respond to the message, but the space station can't hear him. Then he realizes that Rebecca left the rover, so he begins following her footsteps. Eventually, he finds her, but Rebecca tells him to stay back because she can feel the infection already taking effect. Desperate to save her, Vincent runs to her anyway, so Rebecca removes her helmet and dies of suffocation. In just a few minutes, her body reanimates and attacks Vincent, who fights her to restrain her. Rebecca begs him to end things for her, so Vincent chooses mercy and bashes her head with a rock. Moments later, Vincent sees the Aurora approaching, so he runs to the landing site. Unfortunately, there are also three creatures heading there, so Vincent tries to warn the Aurora not to open the hatch, but they can't hear him because of the storm interference. As soon as the rescue team comes out, the creatures attack them and kill them, and their screams of terror can be heard by Vincent on the radio. He still keeps going and finds the creatures feeding on the rescue team, but at least they don't notice him. There's also a body rotting in the most awful of states. Then Vincent enters the ship, and after locking the door, he finds Robert in the cockpit. He's still self-aware, yet Vincent can already see signs of infection and says they can't risk taking the bacteria to Earth. Robert quickly attacks him, and a fight ensues during which Robert stabs Vincent's helmet. Then Robert tries to fly the ship, but Vincent takes the knife and stabs him back. As the ship starts flying by itself and shaking badly, Vincent and Robert keep fighting. Vincent keeps headbutting Robert until he stops moving. Then, Vincent takes off his helmet, now stained with Robert's blood, and opens the hatch, sending Robert's body out into space. For a few seconds, Vincent struggles to breathe and imagines Rebecca comforting him. After that, Vincent sends a message to the station, explaining everything that happened. He knows he might be infected, so he shares his plan to crash the ship on Mars if he shows any symptoms. The Aurora continues to fly as Vincent waits for a response. 